After years of controversy, Precinct 2 Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela has lost the legal battle to keep her job. Plus, we're going to take a look back at some of the biggest controversies she's been involved in. And a local doctor stressing the importance of keeping your child from vaping as the number of lung disease cases linked to e-cigarettes continues to go up. Thanks for joining us from the KSAT 12 newsroom. KSAT 12 News at 9 streaming right here from the heart of KSAT. I'm Steve Spreester filling in for Myra Arthur. We begin, though, with tonight's big story. After two years of controversy, Bear County Precinct 2 Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela will officially be out of a job in less than 12 hours. Her successor has already been sworn in. Stephen Cavazos has been following the story. He gives us a rundown of today's events. Now, former Precinct 2 Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela says she's starting a new chapter. But her time as constable was a tenure that was surrounded with controversy. My constituents has always been my important factor, what they want and what they need an elected official. And I'm only going to continue that into my next journey at the Bear County Sheriff's Department. Today, Barrientes Vela was forced from her seat, a move made after a judge ruled against her lawsuit to keep her job. Barrientes Vela saying she wasn't surprised. Since I've been taken office, I've been harassed, intimidated, and so forth. So this ruling today, is not nothing that I expected. But Precinct 2 Commissioner Justin Rodriguez says he's focused on moving forward as a community. Yeah, I think we're just uh, excited and looking forward to turning the page. Today, Leticia Vasquez was sworn in as Precinct 2 Constable. Vasquez comes with 25 years of experience with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, certainly, Ms. Vasquez rose to the top in terms of her many years of service in the Sheriff's Office, particularly in community policing. Vasquez says that she's coming to the position with an open mind. And when asked about missing files at the Precinct 2 offices, she had this to say. As of right now, I guess I have authority to go in and find out. Parientes Vela wishing Vasquez the best of luck as constable, but asks that she consider the officers and deputies who she says were serving the community. They're hardworking individuals that do not need to be out of a position based on what occurred here today. But it's her supporters who Barrientes Vela says were robbed today. But she remains focused on her next goal. Their vote was taken. But today, we'll move forward together. For the Nine, Stephen Cavazos. This is just the latest development in a very long story we've been covering here at KSAT. Since she was elected as constable in 2016, we've been covering her troubled tenure. Tonight, let's take a look back at some of the biggest scandals she's been involved with. We're going to start here in September of 2017. That's when Barrientes Vela and two other high-ranking deputies from her office traveled to Austin for open records training. Now, the records obtained by the KSAT 12 defenders showed they stayed in high-dollar hotels, had meals on the taxpayer's dime, but skipped the main training session. Then a year later, in September of 2018, the Bear County Auditor pulled a request from Barrientes Vela to have the county pay for uniform patches. After a defender's investigation revealed that the phrase on that patch was historically inaccurate, Barrientes Vela claimed to be the first female to hold that office. But records actually show this woman, Mrs. S.M. Indana Meeks, was appointed constable in 1941 after the death of her husband. Fast forward to April of this year. Leonicio Moreno, the constable's opponent in the 2020 election, arrested on a charge of felony perjury. Prosecutors dismissed the case within hours. A defender's investigation then uncovered jail footage showing Precinct 2 deputies delaying Moreno's booking until the cameras showed up. And just last month, Variances Vela triggered an automatic resignation under state law after she announced plans to run for sheriff in 2020. The resign to run law prevents elected officials from announcing a run for a different office when they have at least 13 months left in their term. KSAT defender Dylan Collier has actually talked about his coverage extensively on KSAT's News at 9. He stepped into the breakdown booth in August to share the story behind the multiple stories. You can watch that right now on KSAT.com slash News at 9. Every day, it seems we hear about new reported cases of lung disease related to vaping. Vaping has become a popular cigarette alternative, especially among young people. In fact, a 2018 survey conducted by the federal government found that more than 3.6 million middle and high school students have used e-cigarettes. Tiffany Huerta spoke to a doctor about tips you can use to identify whether your child is vaping, something that's especially important because the long-term effects are still unknown. 
You have younger kids now using nicotine who probably wouldn't have ever tried nicotine before. Dr. Tom Gowan with North Central Baptist Hospital has been studying vaping for several years. He says while the technology has been out for a while, the long-term effects are still unknown. When you see people exhaling and all that steam is coming out from the exhale, the exhaust, if you will, that is not stuff from the cartridge or that vapor is coming from the person's own lungs. The CDC says it doesn't know which chemical is causing lung injuries associated with e-cigarette use or vaping. Dr. Gowan says he knows firsthand the impact vaping can have on people, in particular children. Some don't know exactly what's in their e-cigarette. Did not say it was necessarily nicotine that he was vaping. Uh, unfortunately, he got high blood pressure, altered mental status, and other things because they can put hallucinogenic agents in it. They can put synthetic uh, marijuana in it, uh, uh, THC type oils. Those are all easily inaccessible and sometimes even ordered illicitly through the mail. Dr. Gowan says if you want to find out your child is vaping, you should look out for. One is an unexplained sweet smell in the child's room, usually into the, indicates they've been using a flavored type of vape. Anything that looks like a pen or anything that might look like a jump drive. But the other thing are these tiny little springs about this big. Dr. Gowan says parents can also look for children complaining about nosebleeds, dry mouth, sore throat, and constant smokers type cough. The CDC says more than 1,000 lung injury cases associated with using e-cigarette or vaping products have been reported, and 18 deaths have been confirmed. Dr. Gowan says he will be visiting a school soon and hopes parents speak with their children about this issue. I think they talk about drugs and alcohol, and we've left vaping off of that conversation. We need to bring it into it. The CDC recommends that you don't use e-cigarette or vaping products, particularly those containing THC, while it continues its investigation. For The Nine, Tiffany Huertas. Last month, the Metropolitan Health District said there were two cases of severe lung disease possibly associated with vaping. That number has been brought down to one after determining the other case was not linked to vaping. If you still have questions about vaping and the possible health impact, we want to hear those questions. You can submit your question in writing right now on ksat.com slash news at nine. Tomorrow afternoon, we're going to have Dr. Tom Gowan at KSAT to ask him your questions. You'll be able to find that conversation after 2 o'clock tomorrow on KSAT.com. <laughs> a deal to rebuild the Lake Dunlap Dam has been reached. A dam deal. It would be done in about two or three years. We showed you this video in May of the dam giving way. Aging structural steel is believed to have caused the Spillgates failure. The Preserve Lake Dunlap Association has proposed creating a taxing district known as a Water and Control Improvement District to pay for the repairs. The tax would be on properties that touch the lake. It would cost about $25 million. It would be paid off in the next 30 years. But if that plan doesn't work, the association says it's exploring other ways to get the lake view back. There's multiple plans that we're going down parallel avenues. So if plan A fails, plan B and plan C the taxing district would have to be voted on and approved in May. The association says the exact cost to property owners still being worked out. It's expected to be released during a town hall in March. San Antonio police searching for the driver in a deadly northeast side hit and run. Historic power outages in California being used as a way to protect the public from potentially dangerous fires. And American Airlines, after grounding the jets for the past several months, They've announced plans to put the Boeing 737 MAX jets to use once again. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. San Antonio police trying to determine whether a vehicle abandoned at a northeast side apartment complex was the same one used in a deadly hit and run this morning. Officers found the victim dead on the side of the road at the intersection of Wiedner and Leonhardt around 4 a.m. A truck was found not far away by residents at the Encanta Via Apartments. For people who live in this complex, there were a few red flags. For one, they had never seen the vehicle before. Also, the way it was parked and left seemed a bit unusual. The truck has been taken into custody for processing. Houston police investigating an incident where an officer hit and killed a bicyclist. A witness captured this video of the crash on dash cam. Investigators believe the bicyclist failed to yield the right of way. People in 34 California counties dealing with what's being called the largest preventative outage in the state's history. 
power company PG&E cutting off electricity, preparing for high winds that could potentially bring down power lines and spark wildfires. The utility was held responsible for the campfire last year, which killed 58 people and was caused by downed power lines it owned. But winds are expected to pick up overnight with gusts up to 70 miles an hour possible in some areas. The extreme fire threat here in California could last through Friday. A local man who killed his wife and then shot himself in what police called an attempted murder-suicide, sentenced to 30 years in prison. Hernandez is not a U.S. citizen. That means that once he completes serving his sentence, he'll be turned over to immigration authorities and be deported. Months after federal regulators offered the grounding of all 737 MAX planes made by Boeing, one U.S. airline is returning it to the skies. American Airlines says it will start flying the aircraft again in January. They were originally grounded following the two deadly crashes that resulted in the deaths of more than 300 people. Video from China shows a four-year-old boy dangling from a window ledge by his head, four stories above the ground. The child slipped through metal security bars on the outside of the window and became stuck. Firefighters secured the boy using a rope while they worked to free him. They were eventually able to pry the bars open and free the child. Caught on camera, a Florida construction worker rescued after his scaffolding collapsed. His safety harness kept him from falling. But the man was left about 35 feet up, waiting for help to arrive. In California, a massive crane collapses, damaging several homes and leaving one person with minor injuries. The crane belongs to an electrical company that was replacing poles. Investigators are looking into what happened. Tesla CEO Elon Musk tweeted that his company plans to launch customizable horn and movement sounds for its cars. Movement sounds are artificially produced noises that electric cars make to help warn pedestrians they're in motion since they run so quietly. Musk specifically mentioned goat noises, coconuts, and fart noises as possibilities. Hmm. To read more about these nine stories, just head to ksat.com slash news at nine. So All right, let's be honest here. There are a lot of things I wouldn't mind my car sounding like. I don't know if I'm going to go with you fart know, noise. Fart noises. <laughs> yeah. what, what would you pick? What kind of sound would you pick? I'd want something like, like you know, like a 67 Camaro or something, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah. I would just do like chimes or the sound of the music. Like a, like a bicycle bell, like ding, yeah. ding, 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 ding. Ding, Or yeah. when Julie, when, when she goes, oh, that'll be it. That'll be my sound. Julie Andrews? Yeah, Julie Andrews. That? Yeah. Julie, the sound of music? Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Steve, I'm sorry, I'm a little tired. No, this that's okay. This weather just, has been to, so wacky lately. I'm trying to keep up with you, Sarah. Thank you. That's it's all I'm doing. It's a little bit hard I know. to do that. Sorry about that. Okay, looking outside <laughs> right now, it was a hot day. 93 was the high. That is just a degree shy of the record. So, yeah, it's still hot outside, even though we did get that front over the last weekend here. But this morning was pretty nice. 66 degrees, a little bit more on the humid side, and we are going to continue to see the heat. Tomorrow is going to be another hot day for us. Take a look at these winds. It's pretty strong this evening. Winds from the southeast at about 20 miles per hour, and that's going to keep things humid for us. Dew points are higher. Dew points in the upper 60s and low 70s. That is at the top of the scale, so don't expect temperatures to go down that much, and tomorrow we'll start off with another one of those icky, sticky, and muggy mornings, a little bit of morning clouds as well. Even right now, temperatures are only 10 degrees cooler than the afternoon high, so we're going to struggle to cool down here. For your Thursday morning clouds, uh, it's 76 degrees, 86 by the lunch hour. It'll be partly cloudy. 93 in the afternoon and hot. Southeast winds breezy at 10 to 20 miles per hour. But Steve, there is some major relief around the corner. In fact, it's going to feel like summer tomorrow but winter on Friday. So I've got more information about the upcoming front there. I like that. Yeah, me too. By the way, coming up, can we talk about Mr. Kringles? We can talk about Mr. Kringles. Okay. That is the best tease ever. It is. Yeah, we'll talk about that coming up. Okay, All sounds right. good. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> An update to a story we first reported to you on Monday on the Night Beat. On Tuesday, Castle Hill City Council denied the request for a special use permit for the Wayside Chapel Evangelical Free Church. The church, located at 410 and Northwest Military, currently has several other properties under a special use permit that was granted in 2011. That permit allows the church to be able to convert homes next to the church into classrooms or offices for church use. In the presentation to City Council, the church's attorney said a denial 
would violate the church's rights through the Religious Land Use Act. Council did not give any specific reasons to deny the application other than the belief the church should have filed a new special use permit for that property. The church already owns the home plus 11 others on the block. Castle Hills residents have concerns about the plans the church has for the properties it owns. The church says annual contributions to the city are made to help offset the loss of property taxes. We'll be right back. When you think of domestic abuse, financial abuse may not be the first form that comes to mind, but it is a serious issue. Abusers can ruin credit scores, steal money, sabotage job opportunities, all with the intent of making it more difficult for victims to become independent. But there are local agencies out there that want to help. Courtney Friedman spoke to a local survivor as part of our series confronting domestic violence. It's called living, excuse me, called loving in fear. That survivor told Courtney that when she left an abusive situation, she reached out to agencies like the Bear County Family Justice Center. The center not only offers survivors shelter and food, but also assistance with their credit scores and their resumes. And that's when you know, okay, you know, I'm not alone. And that's where you get kind of like your sense of like relief, you know, like, oh my gosh, like, you know what? There's good people out there. Allstate has partnered with the center to hold a donation drive for survivors. They're asking for things like deodorant, soap, feminine hygiene products. There are 10 participating local Allstate locations where you can drop off donations. We have the full list right now on KSAT.com. Let's turn now to some of tonight's biggest stories. Two people killed in shootings near a synagogue and a kebab shop in a German town. One suspect is in custody. A 35 minute video posted online appears to have been filmed by the gunman. Investigators looking into whether anti Semitism motivated this attack. The incident comes on Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar. Days after President Trump said the US would be pulling troops back from the border area between Turkey and Syria, Turkey has launched an offensive. Turkish troops invaded northern Syria to push back Kurdish fighters it views as terrorists. The Kurds have been backed by the United States and hold thousands of Islamic State fighters in detention centers. There was concern the detainees could escape if Kurdish forces left their guard posts to battle Turkish forces. President Donald Trump says the U.S. has moved some of the most dangerous Islamic State fighters to another location for the time being. Three types of sexually transmitted diseases are at an all time high in the United States. That's according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The agency says gonorrhea, chlamydia and syphilis cases have risen for the fifth straight year. More than 2 million people were diagnosed last year. The combined number marks the most cases ever recorded since monitoring began in the United States. All right, so earlier we talked about Mr. Kringles and I anchored the six o'clock show with Jaffe Gray. Yeah. She calls her Christmas tree Mr. Kringles. Like Chris Kringles. That's pretty awesome. And she like is it's up. She's ready. Yeah, we both She's had not no waiting for a cold. No, part. yeah, exactly. She is ready to go. Well, a lot of us don't even have our Halloween decorations yeah. out yet, yeah. but that's pretty awesome. So if you want, if you have a Mr. Kringles of your own, time to bring him out. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about the weather forecast uh, in the future cast. It's going to be humid tomorrow. That Gulf humidity is returning and uh, it is going to be kind of icky and sticky tomorrow. Uh, the highs will be in the 90s tomorrow, but look up toward the panhandle of Texas. 
that cold front is really going to come to the rescue here and knock our temperatures down by Friday morning. That cold front will be knocking on our door. We'll start off in the 70s on Friday and on top of that, as that front approaches, there is going to be the possibility for an isolated shower or storm. It's going to get cloudy and it is going to get windy. Winds will be from the north gusting up to 30 miles per hour, so we will in fact likely have a wind chill on that day as well. Now it's not going to be frigid, but by Saturday morning, temperatures will be near 50 degrees in San Antonio in the hill country in the 40s. And by the way, throughout the day on Friday, we're going to be in the 60s. So it is going to be a big season shift within about 24 hours there from tomorrow to Friday. Then we'll slowly climb back up uh, the thermometer. By Tuesday, we'll be back into the upper 80s. But man, this is this is fall. I'll say I'll go ahead and say it. It's Mr. Kringle's weather on <laughs> Friday. So that's look at your seven day forecast. Am I tossing to break, Lexi? Let's go to break. <laughs> he is the guru of all things trending. <laughs> RJ Marquez joins us now to talk about what is trending on KSAT.com yeah. right now. I like that. I'm just going to ask people here from now on to just call me the guru yeah. of all things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably no. Yeah, people are booing. Yeah, they're already uh, booing. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think, that, I don't think that nickname is going to go <laughs> but over. You know what? I like it. I like that coming from you. Um, yeah. All right, uh, Steve. We're don't gonna get start used to today. it. Yeah, definitely <laughs> not. Um, we're going to start today with a uh, Texas tradition. We all know this is homecoming season yes. and mums. We got an article here that are showing some crazy mums, these incredible mums. They're huge. That are taking over yeah. for homecoming. Yeah. Mums the word. Mums the word. Definitely so this, this, is, mums. this is definitely a Texas thing. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And part of the uh, article here is from kind of an outsider's point of view. So uh -huh. the, uh, the author of this article said that they're not from Texas, so they were totally shocked by how people are so involved with these mums. I'm <laughs> not a Texas native. My wife is, mm -hmm. and so she had to explain the whole thing yes. to me. So this is fascinating. Article. Yes, it's yeah. uh, pretty crazy stuff. You can see more pictures here of these elaborate, all over, these mums are crazy. Yeah, um, check it out on our website, kset.com. All right, Love it. moving on here, uh, of course, we are in the Halloween, October, a lot of stuff going on. Well, we are breaking down what you can do with your boo this October. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 those are okay. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna it's be honest, headline. RJ. I never thought you'd tell me what I could do with my boo <laughs> for October. But Look, I, I appreciate that you're worried about yeah. what boo, my boo and I will yeah. be up to. <laughs> Well, if you and your boo uh, need something to do, then uh, yeah, we have all sorts of stuff here. We have the uh, do you Halloween notice that our, do you notice that RJ's like, I'm I'm moving through this. I just want to get through this one. Okay. Yeah, we're getting yeah. through this. Um, yeah. That was in the headline. What could I say? Um, yeah. We got a lot of different things going on. Of course, Sea World, Hollow Scream, Six Flags having their big fright fest going on. So uh, pretty cool stuff here across the area. Yeah, sounds <laughs> sounds beautiful. Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. All right, uh, last story here. Okay, oh, yeah. so we're following up on this uh, this cricket crisis of 2019, and if you've stepped outside within the past 24 hours, you've probably noticed this massive invasion of crickets all what, over San Antonio. What's the deal? Okay, so it obviously has to do with the weather. We have a full explanation in our articles. We've done a few of these now to explain where these crickets are coming from and why they have uh, basically breeded this way. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. We also have social media reaction, which is always the best. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, about people talking about these crickets, saying we're at war with the crickets. <laughs> um, a lot of crazy stuff going on. A lot of memes. A lot of that memes. That have to do with crickets sure. right now. <laughs> yeah. Now, I've had people tell me that they haven't seen any, then they stumble upon them and yeah. they're shocked. Yes. I mean, I saw them last night at HEB. It was nuts. Yeah, they're all over the place. Um, interesting. Bernie School Elementary School um, actually has released chickens to combat the cricket problem. Yeah. So they sent really? us a video. It's pretty cool. Yeah, apparently, you see the play behind us right yeah, now. Yeah, apparently chickens like that. really love crickets. I didn't know this. <laughs> um, so chickens love crickets, and we got a major cricket that, crisis. That's a, that's basically a chicken buffet right there. They're, there you they're, go. They're like, you yes. know. <laughs> so, I wonder if chickens say it tastes like crickets. That's true. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs>
<laughs> hey, I laughed. I thought it was funny. Wow, did you, yes. did you see the booze know, over there? Yeah. yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. I thought uh, I thought the booze were your thing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. Thank you, RJ. Uh, that we'll is be, what's trending. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back. maybe check the hood, make sure nothing's on fire. And she looked and the whole entire um, compartment was filled with grass and walnuts. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Alibaba is going to stop selling e-cigarette components in its U.S. online store. The Chinese e-commerce giant had long banned the sale of complete e-cigs in the States, but the move to stop selling even parts of the devices, like empty cartridges and so-called box mods, comes amid increased regulatory scrutiny over vaping. Deaths attributed to the vaping illness are reportedly tied to makeshift or bootleg vape products, many of which are sold online. And a major executive at Facebook's Libra crypto project has left. Simon Morris was the Libra Association's head of product. He evidently left the Geneva-based operation back in August. Morris was among the few known members of that body, which was set up to run Libra independent of Facebook or other corporate backers. PayPal earlier pulled its backing of Libra amid increased regulatory scrutiny. And the scientists behind the batteries sitting in your smartphone have won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. American John Goodenough, Stanley Whittenham of Britain, and Akira Yoshino of Japan will all share the honor and split the $906,000 award. The scientists developed the first functional lithium battery in the early 1970s, then doubled its potential capacity and made it safer to use. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Schuller from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. So what did we learn tonight? Well, we learned a lot about a tree called Mr. Kringles. That's what Jaffney calls her Christmas tree. I hope you take that with you tonight. Myra should be back tomorrow. Have a great night. I'll see you on the night beat at 10.